afternoon, everybody. Atlanta and DFW, all y'all checking in? You got your flight plans going? We are going to do a lightning round on all these questions. I, there's probably about 40 questions. Can you imagine that I can get through 40 questions in an hour? Who knows? We're going to try. We're really going to try. First, we got to do some housekeeping. Um, office in a bags. The red office in a bag is for our emergency control journal. June 1st starts hurricane season. So let's, let's get our, it's half price y'all. It's half price. So get it now because it won't be for very much longer. We have uh, pink rags are $10 for a pack of 12. They're the small ones, just like this. We have our new calendar is out. And I don't have it anymore. I only got to hold it for just a few short seconds. But we have our regular size calendar. Our regular size calendar, which is hot pink. This is the, our old calendar. This is our old calendar. And then we're going to have a mini calendar, which will fit in your pocketbook that's hot pink too. So get it while we have it. I mean, I'm telling you, this is going to be so much fun. So much fun, this mini calendar. And get them both because you can't do one without the other. The family has to be able to see your calendar and you need to be able to have a replica of that calendar in your pocketbook with you when you're making appointments. Y'all made a believer out of me and we put it together this year. So get this going. We also have a our mop pack with a mop and handle, mop head handle and two chenille mop cloths is, is half price right now. <clears throat> and we are working in our Chaos to Clean book. And today we are on day 23. Lovely bookmark. I made it easy for me. And, and in day 23, we're talking about adding a, an afternoon routine to your morning routine and your before bed routine. So start dinner, help with homework, and empty those lunch boxes so you don't have stuff growing in them. So let's get that done. And next month we are going to be working in, um, here's the quote too. Our routines free us to fly. You're in your cockpit. Kitchen is your cockpit. Let's let's get things done. So tomorrow we'll deal with day 24. And get your... Um, we're about sold out of the body clutter book on our website. So you might have to go to Amazon and get it. So if we're out, I think we had five copies left this morning because y'all been buying them like hotcakes. You've been buying the mini calendar like hotcakes too, along with the regular calendar. So let's get that done. Here's our body clutter book. Body clutter. And then I have my hanky. Are you ready? Let's see how much we can get answered. How many questions we can get answered. Okay, first question, first question. Liz puts them together, Patty puts them together. How do you get the energy to clean after working eight hours at your job? The secret is to do something when you're fresh in the morning, to do something fresh in the morning. Once you establish these habits, once you establish these habits, just going through your routines is gonna put you on automatic pilot. It's not a burden to spend two minutes doing your floors or spend two minutes gathering up the trash. Half the battle is, is motivating yourself. So put on one of my videos, put on some of our fun music. And when you are fresh as a daisy, as you are first thing in the morning, that's when you need to do one of your mission, a mission or, uh, you got to do, where is my list? I have a little list of things that we print out and put. Uh, oh, oh, and by the way, please share our videos. This is going to be a really great one. I'm trying to find. 
our little list. There it is. So I do weekly home blessing one thing a day, one thing a day. So, and this is free to download on our website in the control journal section of our website. And you just hang this up on your bathroom mirror. And as soon as you get through getting dressed in the morning, go do one of these things. Some people like to do one in the morning and one in the afternoon. In three days, they've blessed their home. And then Friday, they start over. So you see, it's easy if you'll just keep it in front of your face. Okay, so be sure and get the big calendar with the little calendar. We have a package of them. And this way, you do, the family is going to keep asking, when are we going to be there? When When's... You know, when's my play date? When's graduation? All this stuff is, if you have it on the calendar, they can go look at it and save you having to answer a million questions in one day. So working eight hours, you pace yourself at work. You need to pace yourself at home. Hey, Jay, that's my brother-in-law. Okay, next question. I was wondering how you stay so motivated. I'm a happy person. When you're happy and you have systems in place, this is what Scott Adams calls it, systems in place. These systems help you get things done. Like I have reminder, I'll pick, I'm gonna pick up my phone. My phone's right there. Um, I have reminders on my phone. I get the Fly Lady app and it sends out a reminder every hour. Everything from drink your water, which by the way, get your water ladies. Next month is drinking our water, but we're getting a head start on it. <clears throat> so, I stay motivated because I've got these reminders coming in to my phone, which I get a notification of them, and wow, it's amazing what I can get done. If if I made up just some little little cards, little pieces of paper, of the different things that I needed to do every day at the top of every hour when I get a reminder to walk up and down the stairs I would do one of those before I walk down the steps so you see you can get it done but sometimes out of sight out of mind and we don't think about it so we need our little list in front of us and if you have it as a, a sheet of paper or a number of cards or you're gonna play fly lady bingo if you make it fun it will get done. What's your biggest advice for homeschool families? Pretend like you're a professional teacher. Yep, get up and get dressed like you're gonna go to school. And join our homeschooling section. Get our homeschooling emails from Tammy. She's been homeschooling 20 years. Okay, how can I use help with my foster closet. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, so I'm gonna guess. I have birth to 5T in both boy and girl clothes. What should I do, donate or sell? I think you should donate them. Give them to um, a woman's shelter. When kids have to, when mo mothers have to leave because of abuse issues, they need clothes for their babies. If you donate it, you'll be blessed tenfold. Not with more clothes. Not with more clothes. You'll be blessed with blessings. The new calendars are hot pink, y'all. They're hot pink, both of them. I just don't have one in front of me. And I only had the mini calendar for all of um, two minutes. So if you have a closet to, to help with foster families or foster children that you keep, then you may need to keep those clothes. But if you quit fostering children, give them to somebody that does. Give them to a church. Give them to a women's shelter. Bless someone else with your abundance. I don't recommend selling anything. Give it all away. Bless someone else. Because... Trying to sell it, you're going to say, oh, I paid this much for this and that and the other thing. It's going to make you feel bad when you only get 25 cents on the dollar. Then let it go. Let it go and bless someone else. Any tips for getting hard water stains off of the 
fridge water dispenser tray. <laughs> we have that issue too. And I use a purple rag on it just about every day, but occasionally Robert has to take it downstairs and he uses the Dremel tool to scrub it off. And guess what? You can order a new one for about $5. If you find your model number and, <clears throat> and your serial number of your refrigerator and your make, then you can go on Amazon and order a new one if it gets so bad. And they're not expensive. But it bothers me too. Hard water. We have really hard water. One page down. Seven to go. Okay. I have three children under the age of three. God bless you. We often struggle with acquiring small trinket toys in large quantities. Yes, those toys come in Happy Meals and all kinds of things. How do you suggest keeping that to a minimum when we get free ones given to us frequently? Well, here's the deal. If you get a new one, you have to get rid of an old one. Get it down to five. Let's, let's declutter to five. And then when you get a new one, you get rid of an old one. Just that easy. And get them in the idea that when they get something new, they have to get rid of something old. It's all about letting it go, letting it out, letting it go. When will the carpet sweeper be back in stock? In June. It will be back in stock in June. Y'all bought them like crazy. We weren't expecting to sell that many, but y'all bought them. How often should I clean my windows? Well, I clean the windows on my front door and my back door every week, every week. Um, the picture windows and the kitchen windows about once a year. If we get a bad rain and it's a blowing rain, I'll take my mop outside and I will mop my windows and then wipe them down with a purple rag. There you have it. <clears throat> I have three bathrooms. Should I swish and swipe all three every day? If you're drinking your water, go to a different bathroom every time you have to go potty. It's just that easy. And swish and swipe that bathroom. Yes, you can do it. Ba bathrooms that aren't used often need to be used every day just to keep the smell. And if you don't use a bathroom often, the water's going to evaporate. And that's why we have that trap, that S trap in a toilet to keep the sewer smells down. So yes, go to a different bathroom every time you have to go potty and keep a swish and swipe set in every bathroom. Every bathroom needs one of these because you don't want to have to lug a rubber swisher around from one bathroom to another. Yuck. Yuck. Okay. That's two pages down. Look at us. Question. I would like to hear about getting started. I work too, so I can't always follow the same order. You're whining. You're just whining. There's no, no ifs, or, ands, or buts. Everybody can go shine their sink, whether it's in the morning or at night. Everybody gets up, whether they work, whether they work uh, a swing shift or they work uh, a regular shift. They have to get up and they have to go to bed. So you have a get up routine, which is for me is my morning routine and a go to bed routine, a before bed routine. So everybody can do, you got to brush your teeth. You got to wash your face. All this happens. So you're trying to make your situation special. It's not. We've all got homes. We all get up and we all go to bed. And in between that time, somebody's doing a lot of whining. So when you'll do away with the whining, you'll be able to get some stuff done. Now, we get started with shining our sink. Shining your sink. Go shine your sink. If you have not shined your sink and you're watching this program for the first time or the 15th millionth time, go shine your sink if you hadn't done it. If you have not done it. 
So here we go. Go shine your sink. Get up every day and get dressed to lace up shoes, whether you're going to work or you're going to stay home all day. Today, I had to put on a pair of sandals. For some reason, it's hot out today and we haven't turned our air conditioner on. So my feet were super hot. I couldn't find a pair of socks that were cool enough. So I put on my Velcro sandals and they stay on my feet and I'm very happy with them. But it's my first, I didn't even wear them last summer, but this summer I put them on already because it's hot. Okay, let's see. How do you handle a critic? I'm finally getting a grip on my stinking thinking, but other perfectionists go ahead and say, what say what I used to think ignore them it's your house it may be their house too but you get stuff done you keep at it your routines are gonna put your homemaking and housekeeping on automatic pilot and just let them fuss if they don't like the way you do it say here's a purple rag go go do it yourself don't do it in a smart alecky way but go do it. If they don't like the way you've done it, oh well, maybe they can do it better. Let them show you. Robert has a thing about the dishwasher. Do I care? No. He gets, he, he'll think it's full. Well, we can't, we can't get another thing in there. Your coffee cup's going to have to go in the sink. Well, you're not going to put a coffee cup in my sink. Uh -uh. And I go make room to put a coffee cup in the dishwasher and then I start it. But he sees the, the dishwasher full. I see potential. Does he fuss at me? No. He did remind me that I was letting my flowers die. <clears throat> well, you just ignore what those people put on some music, put on your earbuds, play some music, and then you don't have to hear them. How did you come up with the name Fly Lady? Because you are a fly on my wall. Is that how you know what's under my sink and in my bathroom? No, that's not how I know. I came up with my nickname Fly Lady. <clears throat> I didn't really come up with it. Somebody on a message board gave it to me because I used to teach fly fishing. Yes, I can teach you how to fly fish right here, right now using my magic wand. I can do it. You hold your fly rod with the thumb on the top of the rod. You hold your wrist straight. And you don't bend your wrist. You keep it straight. Even if you have to tie a bandana around your wrist or put a scrunchie around your wrist to hold the butt of the rod. That's how I used to teach fly fishing. I can teach anybody to cast in five minutes. Anybody can cast in five minutes if they'll listen to me. But now fly lady means finally loving yourself. And that's what I teach you to do now. And that's my purpose for being here. Let's see. And I know what's under your sink because it's been under mine until I cleaned it all out. Now I have a little uh, Rubbermaid bin underneath my sink that contains my Windex. It contains um, my Comet, because I use Comet occasionally. It contains um, a basket that holds my dried, dirty dish towels and purple rags and silver rags. And I have my bread maker and my um, crock pot underneath my sink, because it's tall. I got plenty of room. I keep getting late fees and my water cut off. How do I get control of my bills? Well, put it on your calendar. Put it on, you're forgetting to pay them. So what you got to do is when your bill comes in, you need to mark it on your calendar a week ahead of time. On your payday, whenever you need to get paid. So let me find May. Here's May. If your bill is due on the 20th, on a Monday, 
You need to pay it before Monday. So put it on the 15th to pay it. And put it in big red and mark a circle around it. In fact, when it comes in, you can write your check, put it in the envelope to send it in, put the date that you're going to mail it on right where the stamp goes and put it with your bills to go out to the mailbox. That'll keep control of it. <coughs> How do I get past feeling like a martyr? Oh, and since we have the office in a bags on sale right now, let me pull this out again. Since they're on sale right now, get one and make this be how you pay your bills right in here and the mini calendar fits right in this pocket right here so get the office in a bag the mini calendar and and this can become your bill paying station and you can pay them anytime put some envelopes in there some marker some good pens and you'll be good to go and they're half price. How do I get past feeling like a martyr? This is from Cindy. Now, here's the deal. You feel like a martyr because you're keeping score. Nobody loves a martyr. Nobody. Not even you. You don't want to feel like a martyr. So, let's hear ourselves, what we say to ourselves when we're feeling pitiful and feeling sorry for ourselves and nobody ever does anything around here. You got to stop saying that stuff because it's going to push people away from you. It's going to push people away from you. So here you go. Feeling like a martyr is stinking thinking. This is your, this is your house. Let go of this martyred feeling and do what you can to bless your home and bless yourself at the same time. If it blesses this husband that doesn't do anything around the house, so be it. But it's blessing you at the same time. If he benefits from the rain, you know, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So you have got to let go of this martyr feeling and quit keeping score. You know, it's not your turn to, his turn to vacuum or his turn to cook dinner. You can't go on strike. It's your home too. And you deserve to live in a home that blesses you, that gives you peace. It gives you peace. Okay, next one. Why is your calendar so much better than the free ones I get? I need to convenience convince my husband that I need to buy it. Okay. Do you know when you try to write on your calendar and you don't have any space and everything gets messy and jumbled up and you can't find what you're looking for? Guess what? This calendar has huge spaces. Most men love this calendar because they can see it from across the room. They don't have to get out of their chair and go look. This is, most free calendars have a picture up here and the calendar down here. That's a waste of decent space. If you want a picture above your calendar, get the free calendar, fold it where only the picture is and put it above this calendar. This is a functional calendar not a frou-frou calendar. Men don't like frou-frou. So get this calendar, get it up on your wall and start using it. Once he gets addicted to using it, he'll, he'll make you buy one every year. You get this one, I mean the one we've got that's coming out, it's good until December 2020. So get the calendar. He He's gonna love it. Most men do. Okay, another page down. Look at us. 26 minutes in and I have done four, 
halfway there, four pages. Now, I've printed them really big, but that's so I can see them. How do I keep up with home maintenance? Here's the deal. We have a home maintenance control journal that's free on our website. Now, whether you have a husband that's supposed to take care of these things or he procrastinates a lot, most of the stuff you can do yourself. I've got Robert stopping by Lowe's today to pick up something for, for me to take care of the maintenance on our pool out front. And you want to know why? Because the little dog gets in the muck and the craziness out there and it's awful. It is awful. I'm going to have to get out there in my shorts and, <clears throat> and no shoes, barefoot, and get in this pond and get this muck out of the pond because she's killing me getting covered in muck and it's drying on her and it turns into little bitty grit and I can't stand it. So go download our home maintenance control journal. It tells you how to take care of your house in all seasons of the year. It also tells you how to take care of your car. So here you go. What is the do it now principle? Okay, here's the do it now principle in a nutshell. My whole life is, revolves around the do it now principle. Here's why. If I do it now, I don't have to think about it again. But put it this way. You're in the bathroom and you use the last little bit of the roll of toilet paper. And when you don't do it now, replace the roll, you're going to be left to drip dry the next time you go to the bathroom or the next time somebody goes to the bathroom. So I have a, a toilet paper holder that is a pedestal. And it is a pedestal and the toilet paper fits on the pen right here. But the lid comes off so I can store five rolls of toilet paper on the spindle. It looks like a hangman's tree. <laughs> you know when we used to play hangman uh, in church? We write, uh, write a word and we try to guess the letters. It looks like a little hangman's tree. And it holds five rolls of toilet paper and a roll that's on there. That way I never run out of toilet paper in the bathroom. And when I get down to one roll... On, on the pedestal, I go into my closet and I get four rolls and fill it back up. It's the do it now principle, which saves me from having to drip dry. And the do it now principle goes with everything. So when you get a bill in the mail, don't put it on your hot spot. Open the bill up, throw the paper away that doesn't belong with the bill, put the bill with the envelope Put it in your office in a bag and put it on your calendar when you're going to pay it. Right there. You, Robert actually writes the check right then and there. We don't have a water bill, but uh, and most of our other bills we do have on automatic draft. But if you're pretty tight on your budget, I understand not, not doing automatic draft. But you've got to have a system. System in place. And that's the do it now system. Do it now principle kicks in and you won't ever have another late fee. In fact, you'll be able to pay for your calendar with your savings on the late fees. Mark my word, it could happen. How long did it take you to declutter your home before you began zone work? I began zone work immediately. I began doing missions every day in the zone I was in that week. I decluttered some in that zone and I would do the missions. Um, one doesn't, the, it doesn't, you don't have to do the other thing first. We're doing it all together. Do you hear me? You don't have to do, you don't have to wait until you've decluttered. You don't have to wait until you decluttered to start doing zone work. Because your zone work is your daily missions. They're fun to do. This 
This week we've been in our master bedroom in our closets and our main and our master bathroom. And um, tomorrow we're going to be washing the windows in our, our bedrooms and our window seals. You know, stuff falls in the window seal and we got to get those winter spiders and stuff out of there. So let's, we're doing little things and you're still going to keep decluttering. So decluttering in your master bedroom, that means getting rid of some clothes that you've been holding on to for way too long. That's the main thing. And old t-shirts and stuff that you have in your dresser drawers that are taking up uh, important space where you could be storing sheets or other decent things instead of them set stuff sitting out on the on the flat surfaces why did decluttering come before organizing well Mimi our clutter is standing in the way we can't organize clutter so we have to do a little bit of all of it. So what, what we tell you to do is to get up and get dressed in the morning, shine your sink, spend 15 minutes each day decluttering. And then you do your mission. You, you start doing your morning routine, your afternoon routine, your before bed routine. And before you know it, you your house is practically cleaning itself. And decluttering... We have let clutter pile up so much that it has ruined our homes. Our homes have become junkyards and storage units instead of a place that blesses your family. I know I'm on my soapbox today and I don't have a great big smile on my face, but I'm telling you like it is. And sometimes a little tough love goes a long way. <clears throat> Why do we have to wear shoes? Your feet are special. If you don't wear shoes, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get plantar fasciitis. You're going to drop something and get glass on the floor and cut your foot. You're going to stump a little toe and break it. You're going to be in, you're going to be in a pickle. You have to take care of your feet. Or your feet won't take care of you. So put on your shoes. I have them on sandals today. But they strapped to my feet. And I can't kick them off easy. Tomorrow's supposed to be a little cooler. So I hope it is. And another thing about shoes. Shoes tell our heads it's time to do something. Every athlete has a different shoe. Except if you're a swimmer. And then some scuba divers have different shoes. But you're not barefoot anymore. You're not barefoot anymore. You're not barefoot anymore, Carla. And you just having your shoes on is going to protect your feet. And shoes also help you to be able to run and catch the dog or run and catch the toddler that's gotten out in the front door. It, we could, as a mother, we could chase after a kid on the rocks running if we had to. But if we've got our shoes on, we can run faster, especially when they have a head start. Okay, next question. This is the last question on this page, and we will have three more pages to go. Yep. Can I just follow your daily plan, or do I need to make a control journal for myself? Yes and yes. <laughs> Let me tell you why. If you follow our daily plan, things are going to start to kick in. But if you have your control journal written down, on a on a note card I'm trying to find my little control journal where is my little control journal if you have your control this is my original control journal it's a cute little five by eight notebook I had my zones my detail cleaning list for zones I had my morning routine, my afternoon routine, and my before bed routine, all right here. Guess what? If you get sick, or if you go to the hospital to have a baby, 
Your routines are written down. When they're written down, somebody can come and help you. Your home can run on automatic pilot because you've made a list. Here's another thing I've done. Um, put your morning routine on a piece of paper, print it out, put it in a sheet protector. This is my morning routine for the house. This is my morning routine for fly lady. This is my afternoon routine for fly lady and my before bed routine. Look at this. It's all on one back in front of a sheet of paper on a sheet protector. It's quite easy. You can even use a, I can't find it. Mm -mm -mm. I, I got to clean up this area just so you know. You can even use a four by six picture album that you give for a dollar. And if I got one over there, four by six picture album at the dollar store and use four by six note cards. And there you've got a control journal. You're making too much of a control journal. Now your emergency control journal, that's a different thing. That's, that's a whole different thing. Okay. Next question. We've got three pages left. Look at us. What is camp going to want to fly? Well, camp going to want to fly is a fun way to get your kids off the couch and doing something fun this summer. Yep. And when you go to camp, if you've ever been to camp, I went to Girl Scout camp for two weeks. Going to camp is fun. Going to camp is fun. You have to keep your rooms clean and that you have to keep the commons areas clean. You have to clean up at dinner. It's all, everybody has a job and everybody does a job. My nephew, not my nephew, my grandson is working at camp this summer. He is an intern at camp and he's loving it. Now he's having to work a lot, but he's still, they have to keep the, they have to set the example for the other campers. You name your cabin, it's just some fun stuff. And camp going to want to fly is how you get your kids involved. So download the free, free, did I say free? Free Camp Going to Want to Fly Control Journal off of our Control Journal segment section in our website. And it is a lot of fun. People have different themed camps. And you let the kids decide what they want to do. Maybe they want to have a yard sale. Now, I do not recommend yard sales to you, but to your children, and teaching them how to make money to do some of the fun things they want to do this summer. Sit down with your calendar and figure out what the rewards are going to be each week and how they're going to make the money to go to the movie theater, or to go swimming at the pool, all these things. Figure out what those rewards are going to be and have a theme to your camp. Doing scavenger hunts and all kinds of fun stuff. <clears throat> are you still doing moving in May by climbing steps? Yes, I've not been really good at it because I was sick in April and it's taken me a while to get my energy back, but most of the time it's just because I forgot to do it. So yes, I'm still doing moving in May, not as strong as I was, but June I'm kicking back in full time. I heard you say on a live show that nature was important to our lives. Can you explain? Well, when I go into a city, whether it's Asheville or New York City or Dallas, wherever I am, if I am around too much asphalt, even going to the office, if I'm around too much asphalt, I start getting antsy. I feel myself getting antsy. I need my trees. I need my birds. 
I, I need my critters. And I live in the middle of 10 acres of woods, forest, beautiful trees, uh, rhododendron, mountain laurel, pink lady slippers. We got it all here. And being, uh, somebody said there was a term forest bathing. When you sink, when you just drink in the outdoors, it's good for you. It is really good for you. I mean, I know when we start coming up the mountain to our house, the temperature drops about 10 to 15, 20 degrees because we're in the woods. I'll be happy to show you the outside of our house and our view and all kinds of, except we don't have much of a view in the summertime because there's a little haze in the air. But if we have a clear day after it rains, I'll show you. So I'm reading a book, book called The Nature Fix by Florence Williams. And it's a really good book. That Last Child in the Woods is a good book too. I read part of it on Sunday. But our children aren't getting out enough into the world. They're not getting out. And sometimes if you just want to take your shoes off, I mean, I grew up barefoot. I understand. But you can go outside and sit in a sunbeam and take your shoes off and have a picnic. And it could be so wonderful just to, just to enjoy being outside, listening. Don't have a headset on. Listen to nature. What do you hear? Today, we had an ambulance come up the mountain. And then it went back down the mountain with the, with the siren going. So that's a good sign. Somebody was still alive. What is the most important routine of your day? It's my before bed routine. Yep. My before bed routine sets me up for tomorrow. I pick out my clothes for tomorrow. If I've got to leave the house tomorrow, I put things on my launch pad. I make sure the dishwasher is empty so that when we get up in the morning, we start with a place to put our dirty dishes. <clears throat> I, I get my work done on Fly Lady so that I don't have a whole lot to do during the day. Yesterday, my day was shot. And if you have a, a PC computer, you need to do your updates. Listen to me. There are some bad viruses out there and Windows put out an important update and you need to do them because it can ruin your computer. So my geek warned me that he said, do your updates, do your Norton updates, do all your updates. And do them today. In fact, my computer's updating right now. It was stuck in update chaos last night. I was ready to scream. And I was up till 1 o'clock because I was ready to scream. I was not good company. And poor Robert. I said, I'm going to kill it, honey. I'm going to kill it. I've got to kill it because it's not updating right. And he, he blessed it. <laughs> he blessed it. And sure enough, it did okay. So I'm happy. My computer's all good now. Except I got the notice that they're not going to be updating my computer anymore because I'm running Windows 7 after January 2020. So I've got to get out my new computer and get it going. i got to change it over to Windows 10. I think I'm going to give that to Robert and let him do it. He loves stuff like that. And my geek will be in town this weekend. So... I had so many, I had 80 updates yesterday. For some reason, my computer quit updating three years ago. No, two years ago. And I had to do all these updates. <clears throat> what is the most important? I already did that. Oh, I got rid of another sheet. How long have you been the fly lady? Since... 1999, 20 years I've been fly lady. Can you believe that? 20 years. 20 years. That's just, time flies when you're having fun. Time flies when you're doing what God puts you here to do. 
20 years. I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay. How many members have you had over the years? And how many do you have now? Well, that's a hard thing to uh, that's a hard thing to say. Um, I would say uh, back in 2008, Yahoo gave me a big party, gave Fly Babies a big party in Dallas because we hit 500,000 members. And that was pretty much before Facebook was really a thing. I know Facebook was around, but not many old people used it. Um, I started on Facebook in 2009, and I started our Facebook page on February the 11th of 2009. And the other day, we had 600 and 43,000 people just on Facebook. And we have another 500 and something thousand. Those are likes. We have 500 and something thousand that just follow us. They don't even like our page. They just follow us. So I would say over the years, because people join, they get their house in order, they establish these routines, and then they forget how they establish the routines, and they think they're kind of always born with it, which is great. And they quit getting our emails. Those of you who are on Facebook watching this now, if you don't get our emails, you're missing out on Fly Lady Immersion because getting our emails is the fast way to change your home. Okay, I'm doing a lightning round. Getting our emails is going to get in your head faster. Watching our videos is going to get in your head faster. Listening to our music is going to get in your head faster. Just trying to see our Facebook posts and that sort of thing, which Facebook doesn't let you see all our posts. They're kind of bad like that because some of my favorite pages I don't ever see anymore. I have to go directly to them. So I would say we have close to 1.2 million people now. Yep, 1.2 million people. So if you want to do Camp Gonna Want to Fly, a wrapped around, you know, beginning with Fly Lady, this is a great thing to do, even with your children. Why don't you get upset when people copy your work? Well, a lot of people copy the work, but guess what? You can't trademark housekeeping. You can't. I tried. <laughs> and I know that's funny, but I've never laughed out loud like this on, on the show. But here's the deal. If you can learn from somebody else, now I don't recommend that Marie person because she's not made for for us. She is a born organized person and she doesn't get it. She doesn't get, she doesn't get how our minds work. She's born organized. I get how our minds work and I don't, I don't get upset. Um, if they try to make money off of it, that's a different story. That's a different story. We've got somebody who's made an app and they stole everything on our website. And that makes me angry. But guess what? I don't get mad because God has my back. God can, can heap hot coals of fire on their heads. But I don't have to get mad. I just stay calm and go about doing. I stay focused on you. Stay focused on you. This week we're in zone four, getting our bedrooms clean. Your bedroom needs to be the cleanest room in the house. It really does. <clears throat> okay. How do you deal with well-meaning family members who criticize your latest craze for clean for cleaning my, who criticized my latest craze for cleaning my home. Well, quit mentioning Fly Lady. You know, when you try to cram Fly Lady down their throats, no wonder they don't want to hear about it. And they make fun of you. They're just waiting for the other shoe to drop and you go on to the next thing. Well, guess what? This is going to stick because we teach you how to make it stick. And that's another great book to read. 
by the Heath brothers. Make it stick. And, you know, I'm realizing Scott Adams and Bill O'Reilly and, and these conservative people I listen to. Well, Scott's not conservative, but he has a system. And the stuff we teach is the stuff he's been doing his whole life. He's implemented systems, morning, afternoon, evening routines. It's a system for him. We have systems in place. Bill O'Reilly has systems. He sits down with his calendar and plans stuff for the summer. We've been doing this for years. We've been doing it all along. Right now, it's getting toward the end of the month. You got birthdays next month. You need to start getting birthday cards. I got Ben's birthday card sent out on Monday because he has a birthday next Monday. Well, it's the 28th. It's Tuesday. But Monday's a holiday. So how do you how do you handle? Uh, it really hurts my feelings, but I'm finally finding some order with your routines. Don't allow their negativity to sabotage you. Just don't let it happen. You know, I say how to do that. Well, put on some fun music. Have a smile on your face. You know, nothing says I love you like clean underwear. If they have a clean underwear in their drawer, they're not going to criticize you for not having underwear. So your success in keeping the house in order is going to shut them up. Now, once the house is in order, they're going to find other things to pick at and be prepared because the cleaner your house gets, the more evil is going to come. They're going to attack you personally, like they attack our president personally. I mean, I heard somebody call him insane today, and I was ready to crawl through the TV because he stays calm and cool too. But if somebody called you something ugly, you'd get upset. I don't get upset. I've been called everything. I got called. Let's see, what did I get called on a video last week or something I posted? A bigot. Somebody called me a bigot. I've never been a bigot in my life. Don't know. So let go of it. Give it to God. And don't allow their negativity to sabotage you. Because you keep doing what you're doing. If it's working, your house is getting cleaner. You're getting dinner on the table. The kitchen is clean then what have they got to complain about? They're going to start complaining about your weight. Next month, we're going to lose some weight too. We're going to lose some weight too because we're going to address our body clutter one chapter at a time, one pound at a time, one glass of water at a time. So give it to God, let it go because you can't do anything about the way they think. All you can do is change the way you react to them. So let it go. Sing the song at the top of your lungs from Frozen. Let it go. Listen to it. Listen to it. Why do you tell us to pamper ourselves when our homes are such a mess? Because you deserve it. You're looking at that messy house and you just, you don't know what to do. I'm going to paint my toes pink this afternoon because I got on sandals and I want pink toes. You deserve it. It's going to energize you. I don't mean take a whole day and stay in the bathtub, but do something nice for yourself. Have a fizzy drink. Robert made me lime fizz last night. It doesn't have any alcohol in it. It tastes like a margarita, but it has no alcohol in it. And it makes me happy. I had a special drink at dinner today, at lunch. I had, um, I wanted some dill pickles. That means I'm craving something. I've been doing low carb for this week. Pampering yourself is important. It's called finally loving yourself. If you don't love yourself, who will? Who will? So take care of yourself. Do nice things to yourself. Read my 11 commandments. Do something every morning and every evening. 
15 minutes will make a difference. How do I learn to love myself? Well, it's accepting yourself just as you are. And I think, I think that learning to love yourself when you're overweight is a big thing because you don't really put yourself down. You love yourself with all your warts, with all of it. You love yourself just the way you are. Now, if the weight comes off, that's different. That's fine, but you can't beat yourself up. I mean, I look at pictures of myself, videos of myself, like I looked at a video today of me uh, taking a purple rag and cleaning the back door. If you do a search for uh, dirty doors and fly lady, you'll see this video. I'm the same weight now that I was then. Lime juice is a little special treat and Robert gives me a cup of coffee in the morning and a, some lime fizz in the evening and it's a special little treat. And I had pickle juice and some crispy dill pickles at, for lunch. So loving yourself is the key to getting your house in order. And here's the final question. And we got two minutes to spare. Why does my house get messy when I'm depressed? Well, you're depressed probably because you're not pampering yourself. You're depressed because you're not eating properly. You're depressed because you might have just had a baby and you've got postpartum depression. You're depressed because you're not dressed to lace up shoes. So go... How do you make lime fizz? It's fizzy water and lime juice. That's it. So, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Did your house get messy because you were depressed or did you get depressed because your house was messy? Who knows? We just have to take right this minute and get dressed to lace up shoes. That's the first thing I had to do when I was depressed, was I had a makeover. They put makeup on me, and they fixed my hair, and they, I got dressed to decent looking clothes. It was wonderful. I carried myself differently. It was the beginning of finally loving myself and then I started meditating and I would meditate on these words I love myself I love breathe in myself and I would say it over and over and over again so there you have it we've gone through eight pages I've cried. I've laughed. I've been bossy. I've been loving. I've had tough love. And we've, we've had fun. When you make it fun, it'll get done. I love you all. I don't know how I can tell you anymore how much I love you. And I'm going to love you until you get this down Pat, loving yourself. I'm going to love you till you can let go of me and you hear your voice. I'm going to love you because we give you hope. In fact, that's probably going to be the song that I, uh, I'm going to play one more day of hope. And that's the end of our show. I'm going to go back, back, one more day of hope. Because that's what we've got here. I love you all. I will see you tomorrow. Get your calendars ordered. Have a great weekend. Tomorrow we're going to talk about Memorial Day. I can hear the thunder can feel my courage tremble
after I have come so far. Today my heart is sinking. Darkness will give in to one, one more day, day of hope, one more day of faith. Tomorrow will be brighter if I get through today. Better days are coming further down the road. So for now, I'll just keep clinging. One more day of hope. One more day. One more day. And I know that I'll get through this. My dreams are in my grasp. Love you all. Ignore the trolls. They just want you to comment on them. That's all it is. Bye. <laughs>